My name's Kyle. I just got a DR650. Why won't it wheelie? Why won't it wheelie? I can't make it wheelie. This is a fucking ripoff. This is all bullshit. I'm leaving. I'm gonna go cheat on my fiance. My name's Kyle. Don't do it, Kyle. 2013 Suzuki DR650. How do you make a, quote, dirt bike, unquote, cruise on the highway without over-revving, floating valves, and overheating? And how do you make the most un-aerodynamic category of motorcycles stable at 70 miles an hour? Well, you use engine displacement, gearing, and vehicle weight. The Suzuki DR650 is a dual sport motorcycle using a single cylinder 644 cubic centimeter twin spark plug engine with 9.5 to 1 compression. It makes 46 horsepower, and the single cylinder is fed by one 40 millimeter Makuni CV carburetor. The fuel tank is metal as opposed to plastic like most dedicated off-road bikes. The DR has turn signals, mirrors, DOT required reflectors, silenced exhaust with a spark arrestor, room for a passenger, and supplied passenger foot pegs. It has a high beam, a speedometer, and a horn. And this example has a windshield and luggage racks. The result, minus the windshield and metal racks, is a bike that weighs 324 pounds dry. Now that's at least 24 pounds too much for a bike that's expected to romp around out in the wild. In making an off-road bike work on the highway, Suzuki made an off-road bike not really work off-road. Because when you're slogging through mud and, and, and hold up, hold up, right here, even wet, soggy grass. You feel the DR's weight rolling and wobbling like a, a grand seal undulating on the shore while a National Geographic reporter in an oversized parka faces the camera and lays a bummer monologue on you, trying to turn your road trip into a guilt trip. And while the heavy DR plows through the mildest of off-road wet conditions, it starts losing traction because the stock tire treads will fill up with earth. Great. Now you have slicks. And you have 200 yards to go before you're on dry ground. Tires. Okay, I understand what Suzuki was doing here. What they wanted was to have customers buy this bike from the dealership and not immediately return it because it was too rough. They packaged this bike to be able to be ridden away from the dealership and feel smooth. And the only way you're going to do that is to have tires that don't have much tread on them, not too deep and not too much space in between the knobs. <laughs> on the tires. If they put DOT knobbies on here, and what DOT knobbies are, are the minimum amount of tread necessary to be road legal. They are off-road tires that still remain street legal. But it's kind of a false promise, because they're the least capable of all the dedicated off-road tires. And they're also terrible on the road. But they fill a gap for people who want to have an off-road bike, legally have it street legal, not, you know, air quote street legal, and be able to handle realistic off-road conditions, you would use DOT knobbies. But DOT knobbies feel terrible and they're loud. They're loud like snow tires when you ride them on the pavement. So they would never have a new motorcycle with legit off-road tires be able to sell to someone who's getting their feet wet with off-road bikes. They'd get out of the dealership and made it go on the road and they'd go, oh, this is terrible, and immediately try to return it or give bad reviews to the dealership. These Bridgestones are really 75% street, 25% trail. And another thing, Suzuki. I love the bikes and I'll continue to own them, but Suzuki does one thing consistent and they will always cheap the fuck out on one component of every single bike they would make. I had a GS500 and they cheaped out on the fork brace. I owned a DR350 and they cheaped out on the fenders or mud guards. And on the Suzuki DR650, they cheaped out on the neutral sending unit. Anybody who has DR650s knows about the NSU fix, and here's what it is. The neutral sending unit is the switch within the gearbox that tells you when the bike's in neutral. It also sends the little signal to the neutral indicator light. Now this switch has to sit in oil and also be able to handle the high and low temperatures as the engine comes up to temperature and then off temperature when the bike sits. What Suzuki did was make this switch out of plastic, not metal. And they didn't properly torque 
the fasteners that hold it into the crankcase. And the neutral sending unit is located behind the clutch. So what can happen, and there are documented cases of this happening, is the bolts or fasteners that hold the NSU in, the neutral sending unit, start backing out over the years. And there is a lot of vibration because even though it is a counterbalanced single cylinder, there is a lot of thumping going on. Those fasteners will back the fuck out and then eventually one will drop into your spinning clutch and grenade your gearbox. So it is recommended that every single DR650, you remove those bolts and replace them with fasteners that have a little hole in them so that you can wire them together and they will never back out. And since this is my DR650, I did that. Suzuki DR650, the motorcycle equivalent of a Jeep Wrangler. A Jeep Wrangler will roll off the lot a streetcar, honestly. A streetcar with some off-road capability, but not much higher than a Toyota RAV4. A Wrangler is a blank canvas on which you create the vehicle you want, and it's the same deal with the Suzuki DR650. Suzuki is giving you a motorcycle that will do a little bit of everything but nothing well. You're meant to ride a DR650 over a variety of terrain and then decide the kind of rider you are or want to be and modify your DR to fit that role. Pick a direction and focus the DR. Do you want it to be an adventure bike? Okay, keep the stock tires or even go to a harder compound for longer life. Add panniers, a softer seat, windshield, and maybe some heated grips. Or you could just buy a stock BMW GS650. How about a focused off-road dual sport? Well then, there's your DOT knobbies, oversized plastic fuel tank, rejetted Makuni carburetor, and remove the airbox snorkel. Or you could just buy a stock Honda XR650L. Maybe you want a Motard. Okay, well now you're going to have street tires and wheels, a pumper carb, full exhaust, and a Bluetooth handlebar speaker playing nothing but Rough Riders. Or you could just buy a stock Suzuki DR400SM. And that's the tragedy of the DR650. Even modified, there are stock motorcycles that perform roles better. When I bought this DR650, I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to go on adventures and go off-road and ride everywhere. Oh, this kind of sucks off-road. Oh, this really only does trails. And... Oh, all these trails in Pennsylvania, they're all DCNR land or they're state game land and no motor vehicles and you can't ride, you need a permit, and what are you doing here? Or it's really heavy-duty off-road trails that this bike can't accomplish unless it's modified with heavier springs and bigger tires and get a plastic fuel tank on there and get rid of the mirrors and everything else. So I started riding this bike just on the street. Well, if I'm just going to ride it on the street, why don't I just get a street bike? So is there anything a stock DR650 does well? Yep. It's the best commuter motorcycle you can buy. 62 miles a gallon. When you're riding around, you see over SUVs. This is a tall bike. When you're riding around, you can look down into cars and see who's on their phone. Oh, gotta watch out for you. Okay, you're cool. Oh, you're texting. Oh, you're looking down. Oh, you got two kids in the back. You're a problem. You see everything. And it has all the low-end torque you want, even with the stock carburetor. You can hop curbs, you can ride down outdoor staircases, and if you're going out at night, you can park this on the street, and it's too tall for drunks to try to, like, sit on here, I'm a motorcycle rider. No, they can't throw you a leg over this thing, this is way too big. Man, you are ready for everything. And then immediately you start thinking about the zombie apocalypse. This is the zombie apocalypse vehicle, because, okay, or general, you know, emergency situation where you have to flee a city. Everybody, once they're deuce and a half, or they want some big truck yes i know you could have a helicopter that's the ultimate escape vehicle great you you know you know get all butt buggy with john travolta and you'll be fine but for the rest of us it's a motorcycle because in every single disaster scenario the roads immediately clog well what goes between the cars motorcycles do or you're gonna have to use the curb the dirt the anything else that's where the dr shines and you're not gonna really go overland you're gonna take the easiest of trails you're getting ahead of the swarm of people now if we're talking about zombies all right, all right, maybe you do want a car. But in every zombie movie, when people get surrounded by cars, they're fucked. The guy on the bike always survives, especially because he's got the uh, sawed-off shotgun off the cross of his back. You just practice, learn to do that with your off hands, and you can drive, and you bang, 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 put that away. Then you get the Glock with the 30 clip coming around. The oh, you're fucking ready. But it's all pretend, isn't it? I just rode around in the street and pretending I was escaping civilization. And the truth is, when you ride this thing on the highway, it's... 
all this exposed bits, you're standing upright, the windshield does help a lot, but you are not aerodynamic at all. Man, at the time of recording this, I'm 37 years old, and I could only really handle an hour, an hour and a half on this bike before I started getting fatigued. And the oil cooler sits on the right-hand side of the engine. So your right foot and shin are always warm, and your left foot and shin are always cold. Or in the summertime, your right foot and shin just bakes. And everywhere you ride on a dual sport, every dumbass is going, do wheelie! And they say it with almost aggression, like they're owed a wheelie. Well, if visible envy means anything, it means that. I never could pass the MSF course, so you gotta perform for me. The figure eight is bullshit, no one can do that. Meh. Is this a good beginner motorcycle? No! Well, I'm tall. I'm a real tall guy. I get these emails. I'm 6'1", I'm 6'2". Honda Rebels are too small for me. Can I ride one of these? Well, all right. Torque numbers vary depending on the outer diameter of the tire you have on the rear. But if you work it, it will wheelie. But this is a motorcycle meant for taller people. I'm 5'10", and I can't flat foot it unless I have big boots on. So if you're taller than me, and if you're 6'2 and above, something like this could be your first bike. You will fill it and it will be comfortable for you. But understand that this bike is not forgiving. That is still one cylinder thumping up and down and it demands respect. You show it fuel, it's gonna try to throw you. The good news is the clutch is very forgiving. You're meant to slip it. It's not a dry clutch and all the power is down low. It's pointless to try to rev this thing. It doesn't have a tachometer, and some people wonder if you can over-rev this. Yeah, but the engine's going to fuel starve with the Makuni carburetor before you would over-rev it and float valves. Now, if you change the carburetor and put a pumper on here, now you're really fueling the engine, and yeah, you can over-rev it. There is no mechanical rev limiter. There isn't even an ECU on this bike. Suzuki's been making the DR650 for 20 years now, and they haven't really changed it. There was a starting issue, but those were ones back in the 90s. The good news is, if you decide you don't want a dual sport, they are the easiest bikes to sell. I have since sold this motorcycle because I was faced with a choice. Do I want to modify this for street use because that's the only place where I ride it or do I just want to get a street bike? Guess what I did. And I sold this thing the same day I put it up on Craigslist. Everybody wants to dip their foot into the dual sport world because everybody has their zombie apocalypse fantasies and it's okay to fuel them. And this bike makes you feel like the lone wolf survivor. And even on prepared trails, you feel like an explorer. You feel like the traveling wanderer. You are stabbing the outward limits of individuality. The cowboy mythos is alive here, and only people who have gone out into the wilderness on a dual sport motorcycle know this feeling, and it's worth knowing, and it's worth having. If you're into bikes at all, explore the dual sport. Explore the unknown, even if it's just unknown for you. Look, Kyle, I don't know what to tell you. I didn't tell her that you did anything with that stripper, but at the end of the day, did you really want to get married anyway? You already won't shut up about the 11 episodes of American Ninja Warrior that are sitting on your DVR that you have no time to watch, so consider it a blessing in disguise. No, I don't want to go get a sandwich. You still owe me 11 bucks from last time.